This is Cowboy Steve, and welcome to Ramblings of a Fractured Mind. This is my first video covering my journey down the rabbit hole into the world of model railroading. Today's video is covering how to make your own resistive wheel sets and what they are used for. On the workbench is everything I'll be using today. Rolling stock or an axle with metal wheels, surface mount resistors, super glue, toothpicks, conductive paint, tweezers, and a small hand file. Exactly what are resistor wheel sets and why would you need them? Before we get into that, let's take a look at how electric model railroads work. There are two basic types of model trains, DC and DCC. Almost all model layouts today run on 12 volt DC power. DC trains have been around since my dad was a kid. They're pretty basic. You have a transformer that converts AC power from your normal household service to DC. Power is run from the transformer to the track via two wires, positive on one rail, negative on the other. Basically, you gradually increase the power to the track, and the locomotive goes faster. Decrease power, and the engine slows down. Reverse the polarity, and the train runs in the other direction. DCC, or Digital Command and Control, also runs on DC power, but is a lot more advanced. DCC runs power to the track just like DC. The difference is, DCC can also send command codes through the track. These command codes feed information to each individual locomotive through a decoder mounted in the locomotive itself. The command codes instruct a locomotive to move forward, backwards, sets the speed, turns lights on, sounds the horn, etc. It also allows the use of multiple locomotives independently of each other on the same track. Resistor wheel sets are primarily for block detection on DCC layouts. Block detection is a way of tracking the trains on a layout. Many modern layouts are broken into blocks. Each block is electrically isolated from the other blocks. One way to track locomotives and rolling stock is to use block detection devices that detect any power draw in that block. The locomotives draw power, but what happens when the lead engines clear a block and there are still 40 cars in the previous block? One way is to add a resistor to one axle of each car and connect that res resistor so track power flows through from one wheel to the other. For my cars, I'm using 10K ohm surface mount resistors. These are easily detectable by most block detection systems. So here is the anatomy of the wheel set. You've got the bushing here in the middle that separates the metal wheel from the metal axle. This is what we're trying to bridge. The bushing prevents the wheel sets from shorting the track. Only one wheel on each wheel set is insulated from the axle. Adding a resistor to bridge the bushing draws a trickle of power that block detection systems can pick up. On wheel sets with a metal wheel and metal axle, you want to attach the resistor right next to the insulator bushing. To complete the connection, we are adding a dollop of conductive electric paint on each end of the resistor. On some wheel sets, the bushing extends out from the metal wheel. You may need to mount the resistor at an angle over the bushing. As you can see, I've spared no expense on my visual aids. Occasionally, especially with older uh, rolling stock, you will come across a wheel set that has metal wheels with a plastic axle. These can still be used. We just have to run the conductive paint along the entire length of the axle. I believe this is an Atherin Roundhouse High Cube boxcar. A quick review of the three parts of the wheel set shows us the metal wheel, the plastic bushing, and the metal axle. This gap right here is what we are trying to bridge. This first step is optional, but I try to rough up the axle where the resistor is going. I'm of the opinion that it helps the super glue grip the axle. I highly recommend cleaning the axle with a little IPA first. It helps remove any dirt, oil, or grease that could interfere with the glue. Add a little glue with a toothpick and drop your resistor on. Shaky hands. Yeah. Small space to be working around with a camera, the camera mount, and lights, and ugh. Again, I'm using a high-tech tool, a toothpick, to add a little dollop of the paint on each end of the resistor. Now we can break out our handy dandy meter and check our resistance. 
Right now, it's at just under 11K. That's what you're looking for. If you check your resistance too soon, your conductive paint might not be dry, and it's going to give you some elevated resistance numbers. Eventually, when the paint dries, it will come in at about 11K. And there we go. In my somewhat limited supply of rolling stock, this is the closest thing I could come to showing a raised bushing and how to mount your resistor to bridge the gap around that raised bushing. When doing these yourself like this, the toothpick is your best friend. It just seems to be the perfect size uh, tool for doing things like putting on the glue, adjusting where your resistor's at, adding the paint. I'm really shaky with this because I'm trying to work around the camera and the camera stand, and which I think I've mentioned before. I pretty much had abandoned using the helping hands at this point because they just tended to get in the way more than they helped, once again because of the limited space we're trying to work around. When mounting these resistors, I try to use the wheel set that's towards the middle of the car, so you can't notice it as much. But that doesn't always work out. As you can see on this car, it's almost clipping the body of the car as the wheel spins around. It's back to the meter, and we're showing about 12K. I believe I had not finished waiting on the paint to dry, so it showed up a little high. And last but not least, we have our wheel set that has metal wheels, but a plastic axle. So we're going to mount our resistor, and we're going to have to run the paint the entire length of the axle to reach both wheels. Quit messing with it and just leave it alone. Many thanks goes out to Daryl from the HO Scale Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Sub channel for the use of parts of his videos. Whew, Daryl, that is a mouthful. On the lower left portion of the screen, you can see the dispatch panel display for Daryl's layout. The train on track 12 has been cleared into the throat of the staging yard by the dispatcher. As the train advances, you can see here where the throat changes to occupied on the dispatcher's screen. In the interest of time, we're going to speed this up a little bit. If we look down at the dispatcher screen, which is how Daryl manages his operation sessions, you can see the individual blocks circled there. And the dispatcher has given this train the clearance to go through the next two blocks. And as he passes into the next block, you'll see it turn red showing that it's occupied. Here is some additional video from one of Daryl's operation sessions, where he has a split screen showing the dispatcher screen across the bottom and the train we are tracking on the upper half of the screen. You'll see it just went through one of the control points right there. And in a second, it's going to move into this next one, and it's going to turn red as well. You'll notice behind it, the control points 
or blocks remain occupied. And that's because there's still cars back there. Daryl tends to run some pretty long trains and it's not unusual for them to have multiple blocks occupied at the same time. That's the reason why we make these resistor wheel sets is to help keep track of what's occupied on these blocks and what's not. Now this went a little deeper into the weeds than I meant to about uh, how you use block detection on an actual layout, but I thought it was important to understand why it is that we use block detection for these more advanced railroad operating sessions on the bigger layouts. So that brings us to the conclusion of this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give me a like, maybe a subscribe if you enjoy model railroading. This is Cowboy Steve signing off and telling you to remember to keep your track clean and those wheels rolling. Bye.